We're, we're here to celebrate uh, the grand opening of this beautiful building, uh, the completion of the fourth floor. Um, but, but in my mind, it's, it's, it's really not about the building. It's, it's what goes on inside not just this building, but all the buildings across Houston. You know, the mission of, of the center was first to attract more students into the engineering uh, academic uh, field. And, and obviously, from the numbers you've heard, uh, we're, we're succeeding in that. But I think more importantly um, is, is the fact that we have also as our mission the responsibility to get as many of those students through the rigors of an engineering program to successfully complete um, their work here to then be accepted to a four-year upper division university and to complete their engineering degree. Um, from the time that I went to school, the numbers haven't changed. One in three students successfully make it through an engineering program. Uh, it's not easy to get through an engineering program. And now when you consider that the majority of our students work, many of them are married, many of them have children, many of them come to class after working a full day, uh, the rigors of getting through an engineering program uh, are significant. And so I think our number one responsibility now is to, um, to, to increase the number of students that successfully complete um, the program. And, and what that means is that we are not just instructors. Uh, we need to also be tutors and advisors and mentors um, uh, of our student population. I was the first one in my family to go to college. Two of my grandparents did not speak English. I grew up in a large urban setting in the Northeast. Um, I can honestly tell you that engineering made all the difference in my life. My life has been blessed. I, my life has exceeded all expectation because of engineering. I can say to you that I never did the same thing twice. Right? No two bridges are the same, no two circuits are the same. Everything, every day it's different. Every day it's new and exciting. You know? And you get to do things that are important. The, um, I am an example of the American dream. And the American dream is still alive and well right here in Houston, Texas. And it's my hope that the Engineering Center of Excellence will make that dream come true for the next generation of engineers that we will help to produce. We wanted it to be prominent because we wanted people to have their nose pressed against the glass and mm -hmm. say, hey, what's going on, you know, and right, right. reel Still them case. in, reel right. them in slowly right. into, uh, you know, into what's going on. Yeah. We started out with a very small, you know, one of the little maker bots uh, and, and have been progressing upward. Now, if you've seen some of the higher end um, 3D printers, they're absolutely remarkable. Some of them so actually so will, they, they can make things in different kinds of metals. Um, uh, and um, some of the really cool ones actually use gypsum and then they paint the whatever they make in, in natural colors. I'll dig out for you and show you. Um, there was a demo of uh, a school class went and they took a 3D image of each one of the students uh -huh. and then before they left they gave them a 3D statue <laughs> of each student and I mean you would swear it was a photograph. You know, it was just absolutely remarkable. The first two year students we let our our clubs use it. So we have a STEM club, we've got a, an aspiring engineers club, and so they, they are very much involved here. And, and you can see we've also got areas set up where they can actually work on making robots or you know, doing different things. They use it in, um, in, their, in the junior and senior year, UT Tyler students actually use it as part of some of their uh, coursework. And, right, and then, um, in their senior year for their capstone project, there's a requirement for them to make at least one of the components of their senior project on a 3D printer. Um, so, so they progress from, from uh, Scilab to LabVIEW to MATLAB to, you know, and, and, and then ultimately they get to the point where they've got files that they can now just, you know, plug in and actually make something. So. Uh, but this is really as much to spark interest as it is anything, right? I mean, you know, for some of these things, as, as cool as they are, you know, I mean, it's really, uh, I remember the first 3D printer that I saw, it was many, many years ago, 
and it was a dinner bell. And so they, they, they made the, the, the dinner bell with, and then the inside had a little chain, you know, with a little bonger thing in the bottom. And when they took it out of the machine, you could take it out and you could ring it. Right? You know, so even the links worked, you know. Um, so it's, it's, really, it's really to give them a peek at, at technology and engineering. So many of the students that don't make it uh, give up because they have to take calculus one, two, and three and differential equations and physics one and two, you know. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get them excited about hands-on engineering early enough so they hang in there. If you've got to wait until your junior year before it starts to really get fun, uh, it's a problem. And so what I always say is if you're trying to teach a child how to play the violin, if you don't show them how to squeak out Mary had a little lamb by the third lesson, you're going to lose them, right? You know? so, so this is a way to, to have um, students do some hands-on really n neat things. We're also uh, adjusting some of our um, early engineering courses. So we're, we're going to retread our introduction to engineering course. Um, we're going to introduce a, um, uh, a new digital systems course, which is really more a plug and play. So you don't need the calculus. You can do it before you've got the calculus and the differential equations. So you're really putting together logic circuits in a plug and play mode. And so the student designs a particular thing and at the end of the course they've got a game that works and they designed it or something like that. Again, to have them experience real engineering early enough before they have to get through the rigors of, of the math and the, and the physics and everything else. Uh, in the upstairs um, labs we have four electrical engineering labs and so there's a circuits lab, there's a power lab, there's a logic lab, there's you know, and then we have um, two large mechanical engineering labs which include all the equipment needed to break bolts and you know shatter stuff and do everything else and you know, each one of those labs is uh, between a hundred thousand and a two hundred and fifty you know about two hundred fifty thousand dollar investment in the bigger mechanical engineering equipment so there is a large capital investment required in the labs and that's also, for those of you that are in academia, that's the choke point, right? You can put 50 or 100 kids in a lecture hall, but you can't put more than 25 or 26 or whatever the number is in a, in a lab. So um, in order to be able to, to uh, really do the programs properly, there's been a very large investment made in laboratory equipments. The key to our program, and in some ways it, it is also reflective, I think, by the, by the Prairie View, uh, location is that our, our courses are convenient in terms of the fact that I know in the UT when I was running the UT Tyler program 87 percent of the students worked you know uh, now in the in the Texas A&M uh, uh, Chevron Academy that's a cohort program and most of those students are full-time students so they're slightly different it's a slightly different model right the A&M program is a cohort program, which I think is excellent because it's very difficult when students come and go against their own schedule to find common times and people to study with, you know, and, and, and work, help each other with homework and do things. So the more you can have students uh, work in groups and, and, and take courses as a cohort, uh, I think the, 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 the research shows it increases the probability of, of success. So the A&M uh, Chevron Academy is, is a cohort program, and I'm, I'm a real believer in that. In fact, we're trying to create pockets of cohorts with tutoring and, you know, for, for all of our students, um, set up the libraries in different ways with study rooms, with portable whiteboards and, and stuff, because our, our, most of our library space is oversubscribed. There's always a gang of students sitting in, in those little rooms, you know, working together as teams. It's the affordability. Uh, just the fact that you don't have to pay room and board, right, is ten to thirteen thousand dollars a year. I mean, I've got my youngest is in College Station, right? So you know, um, so you know, you're looking at uh, over a four-year period, or two. You know, even if you just if you do the academy and then do your junior and senior year on campus, you're looking at roughly a twenty-five thousand dollars savings just for the room and board. It's also true that the tuition is less expensive in the in the A&M Chevron Academy program than if they were you know on the on the main main campus. One of the advantages of Prairie View and why I think we really ought to talk is it's half the distance to College Station and 
and and for most of our students that live in the northwest side of town, they they actually do that as a commute. And to be honest with you, it's the the the, the only the real any hurdles, if that's the right word, really would be internal to A and M because as far as we're concerned, as long as our students matriculate to an upper division program, whether it's Prairie View or College Station, doesn't doesn't really doesn't matter to us. I mean, we, 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 you know, but what, what that does is that allows uh, uh, probably a significant number of students to be able to live at home in their junior and senior year as well. It's another 25k, right? Or probably a little less living, you know, on, on Prairie View, but it, it's a, it's a significant savings. We also have a full civil there is a full civil engineering lab, so that includes a soils, you know, full soils lab and environmental lab and kilns and you know, for, and, and you know all the things that you would need. For, for civil engineering. The academy is, allows students to matriculate in any one of the 16 engineering disciplines. If students started their freshman year at UT Austin for engineering, they're declaring electrical engineering or mechanical engineering right. or civil engineering. Right. Our students don't know. Mm -hmm. so, so our introduction to engineering course is a much more general look at, at engineering. Okay, so this is a 3D printer. Um, it's probably the future of manufacturing in that now we have the ability to design things in a computer file and then transfer that digital file to a device like this to manufacture uh, any of number of things and in a, in a degree of complexity um, that you really can't possibly do with either molds or lathes or any of the conventional methods for, um, for uh, manufacturing complicated devices. Uh, these happen to be working in plastic, but today's technology allows us to make things in any kind of metal up to and including titanium in the, in the, in the high-end um, 3D printer systems. What we try to do with our students is allow them to come in and play with the technology and then little by little uh, via their coursework as well as um, uh, their project work uh, they get increasingly more sophisticated until they get to the point where they actually design a product or a, a, a part um, in uh, either LabVIEW or MATLAB or one of the software uh, environments and then can roll that off to a digital file which then gets uploaded into the printer and ultimately winds up with um, a particular uh, 3D product. So I've designed a uh, just a little winding tool to wind up copper, a wind turbine, hopefully to enter it into a com uh, competition. But uh, yes, this simple tool is just going to wind up this and I'm right now I'm designing a stator uh, it's the stationary portion of an electrical uh, conductor that uh, uses magnets as well to go around the copper and create an electrical current. So this is just uh, another type of way to start a 3D print where this kind of um, takes in, in hand what you're creating and then can place it onto the computer screen. You put an object on here um, and put it on the laser. and It's a little process where it scans it all three three dimensional figure to create a object to print for the three. I'm a I'm studying electrical engineer sophomore currently um, in the STEM club trying to get into a competition we're first trying to see what we're trying to design but this is one of the projects I'm working on myself. Um, they're pretty sophisticated as you can see um, when they come out of the printer uh, you know they actually work and um, and so th this is a simple, uh, a simple example, but they can be far more sophisticated than that. I think what they're doing right now is what looks like probably an octopus, right? Is that what you're making? Okay. So I don't know if you've got a shot of that down there, but you can see the... Uh, so this is a fairly simple, um, fairly simple design uh, in that it doesn't have moving parts, but it, it shows you how layer by layer the 3D printer builds up. It's kind of like... Uh, uh, squirting uh, toothpaste in a very controlled way, um, building up layer by layer, and you can adjust the, the, uh, th those increments um, to actually make the product. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, but it looks like actually that dome is hollow. I guess that, that dome is hollow. So it's building up kind of a dome, um, so that central piece of the octopus actually is not solid. So that's our 3D printer technology. Tell us the benefits of, of, of 3D printing. Well, if I had some more sophisticated um, products to show you, I could show you the degree of detail. Um, there's little or no limitation to how 
uh, fine the detail can be in these printers, it's only limited by the resolution of the digital file. So, um, and the technology keeps getting better and better. So they're actually making surgical um, devices. They're actually making um, uh, uh, artificial hips and, and you know and, and joints and that sort of thing using this technology where the where the specs on the uh, accuracy of the of the manufacturing or tolerances that are far better than what you would get with a conventional mold or lathe or something like that. Uh, and of course, um, once you have the digital file, there's no human labor. I mean, you can crank out, uh, other than changing out the part and, and changing out the mater material spools, um, you can make as many of these as you want um, consecutively. You've got something for us to take a peek at? Yeah, so here's another example. Um, you know, imagine what you would have to do to um, manufacture this and assemble it, and here it comes right out of the digital um, digital uh, printer already operational. And again, in, in real manufacturing, these would be made out of uh, stainless steel or, 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 or titanium or you know some material that would be actually reflect the the part you know years for aircraft. The maker bots over there, they're about two thousand dollars now, and of course, you know they go up in price pretty you know pretty rapidly. Um, where if you're making something out of metal, you can be talking about many hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, but but an entry level, and if and if a student makes their own 3D printer, and we had uh, at least one of our senior project teams um, from the UT Tyler program actually designed and built their own 3D printer, uh, and that came in at um, I think around $1,200. So you can uh, much like the days when people started building their own computers. Um, you can actually build, design and build your own 3D printer and I think you can have a, a, an excellent working uh, uh, device for under $2,000. Imagine the future. Design and build the future. That's who we are, right? The engineers. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate all your support. Keep an eye on us because we're going to do great things.